Hello, my name is Olya Hercules. Welcome to The Food That Makes Us, recipes to comfort and connect us. This is the first set of videos that we're filming since the war started in February. So the energy is going to be a little bit more subdued, but such is life. Please bear with us. I decided to refocus my videos a little bit and to really nail all of the kind of tr traditional classics, Ukrainian traditional classics. I'm hoping that the recipes that we're filming today will be useful uh, to hosts uh, that are welcoming Ukrainian families and, you know, and maybe Ukrainians themselves can watch them and just kind of, I don't know, feel a little bit more at home. So the first recipe that I'm going to make today is going to be holubtsi, uh, cabbage rolls. Um, you know, I've got a couple of recipes in Mamushka and Summer Kitchens, and um, today I'm making my mum's super classical holubtsi. Um, and I've got a meat version, uh, and because Joe is vegetarian, and also I'm sure loads of my viewers are vegetarian, I'm also making a little vegetarian version uh, but in the recipe pack, you'll have it kind of like separated uh, and more, a bit more comprehensible. So for the meat version, I've literally got uh, 500 grams of fatty pork, 500 grams of beef, but you can go either or, or, you know, do the meat that you really love, you know, venison and pork or something like that might be nice, or lamb if you're into lamb, but this is just the way that my mom makes it. Then in the middle, we've got the ingredients that are gonna kind of uh, go into both recipes, the vegetarian and the meat version. Uh, I've got some rice uh, that I'm going, going to just uh, put some hot water over it and leave it there for a bit. I've got some uh, chopped shallots and grated carrots. I'm going to show you how to chop and, and how I grate it in a sec. Um, and that we're going to caramelize and put it into the filling, into both fillings, a little bit into the meat, a little bit into the veggie one. Um, and I've got some more shallots for the sauce, also tinned uh, plum tomatoes, but you can use chopped plum tomatoes. And I've got a cabbage for the leaves, of course. Um, I find that the white, the regular white cabbage, which we normally use in Ukraine, is a little bit too tight in the UK. Uh, in Ukraine, we pick the really young uh, white cabbages, so the leaves are a little bit more loose like that. They're much easier to handle. But, you know, I'm going to show you. We're going to take the leaves off and we're going to steam them, even though my mom kind of um, boils them traditionally, but we'll get there in a sec. It's really good. But this sweetheart or pointed cabbage is the best one I find in the UK but other cabbages can be used like um, uh, you know the white cabbage and um, savoy cabbage as well which will look really pretty and even charred leaves or something like that will work too and for the veggie filling um, again this is how my mum makes it for my husband Joe uh, but he also my, my husband picked some wild garlic recently and I've got loads of these lovely stems left so I'm going to add them in as well um, by the time this video comes out the season will probably be over but I have posted a couple of messages today both on Patreon and Instagram imploring you to uh, seize the moment and pick some and you know these freeze so well especially uh, the stem bits because they're a little bit more hardy and then of course we've got really kind of good quality French creme fraiche uh, but sour cream will work as well it just needs to be quite fatty because you're gonna put some of it into the sauce and you don't want it to split uh, some mushrooms and you know they, they were just like some tired uh, chestnut mushrooms that I had in the fridge and I just like, roughly chopped them and that's all you want and of course dill always with the dill dill is life <laughs> Okay, so I'm using uh, basmati rice there, just regular white rice, that's how my mom would like it. I often use brown rice, but instead of just pouring water over it, over it, I would cook it for, I don't know, like 25 minutes or something, so it's al dente, and then just drain it and use the brown rice. It's a bit healthier, but you know, today I'm honoring my mom, so I'm just doing this. Um, then I'm just going to put some uh, salt, like a generous amount of salt into the rice, and then literally just going to pour this boiling water over just to kind of cover we're gonna drain it after and then I am going to give it a very quick stir and put the lid on and that's it and we're just gonna leave it here while we're doing the rest and then we'll drain it and then we'll be ready to go into the both fillings the mushroom and the um, and the meat one 
Okay, so for the filling, you can just put raw um, onion with the meat, uh, but I like it how my mum does it. So she basically, she caramelizes the onion a little bit first with the, and then adds the carrot as well. And then when it cools down, you add, you know, a little bit to the meat or you add some to your mushrooms as well. So, you know, I diced this and I grated this, but I'm just gonna quickly show you how I diced the onion in case you're new to this and you haven't seen my other videos. So to dice your shallot, and the same goes to an onion, you know, you just cut it in half and then as kind of like close to each other as you can, you just slice lengthways. Make sure not to cut your fingers. So you've got all of these kind of layers and then I'm just going to go across once as well. Don't, don't rush, you know, if it's your first time, if you're practicing, you know, knife skills, just do everything quite slowly. And then I'm just going to cut across and make sure to kind of like have this claw situation here and hold these annoying bits to the side as well. It's much easier, I find. I find dicing a shallot is much easier than dicing an onion because it's, banana shallots are a little bit more, uh, you know, prolonged kind of thing. So that's it. And then just take your time, don't brush, just get to this point. You know, if you get to a point where you're like, ah, I don't want to cut myself, you just stop. And then these little bits, if you're making a little stock or something, you know, I'm going to make green bush later. So I'm just going to like throw these little off cuts into my stock. Um, and then I'm just going to do the, uh, the same with the other shot. I'm just going to do it quickly. So once you practice enough, you'll be able to really smash out all of your dicing. So the dice shallots are for the filling and then we're gonna uh, slice another, this big shallot and we're gonna use it for the sauce. Again, as I say, regular onion is absolutely fine. As always, when you put onions in, I would always put a generous pinch of salt. This helps to draw out the moisture out of the shallots and helps them not to burn so easily. So my mom would put a little pinch of sugar here as well, but I feel like it's necessary. It's okay, we'll... sorry mom. <laughs> you can put a little pinch of sugar here, but I don't. So it's just salt and onions. And as soon as I see that the onions are becoming a little bit dry, I'm gonna lower the heat and have a little bit of water, just add splashes of water in and deglaze the pan until they're really nice and light brown. So it's a medium heat, I'm already going to reduce it a little bit to kind of like the lowest setting and just leave them be here for a second. Oh, actually, sorry, got more shallots. As I say, bear with me today. Let's add all of the shallots in. If a little bit of carrot fell in, that not, not a biggie. So that's it, and we're just gonna leave the shallots to soften and start browning a little bit, and then we're gonna add the carrots and very lightly kind of like cook the carrot as well and then when it's all cool we're going to use a little you know a quarter of it for my mushroom filling and then the rest of it is going to go into the meat and the carrot um is also important this is basically smazhenia it's like a ukrainian sofrito we use it for all sorts of things to add sweetness to dishes so we use this kind of like shallot and carrot uh smazhenia in borscht in quite a lot of soups actually and also my mom likes to add it to the filling of holubtsi just to add a little bit of fuller flavor and also the carrots add a little bit of moisture so some of the carrots i've grated on the rough side of the grater and then i'm gonna do this little bit of carrot on the kind of like on the finer side of the grater and then that's gonna make the filling super uh, juicy okay le cabage <laughs> favorite vegetables so as I say for holopti I love this the most but if you can't find it and you've got a white cabbage it will just take a little bit longer to steam but it's still doable it's fine um, I'm just gonna take this root and off and start separating the leaves and you know I am gonna use all of them they all look pretty good to me uh, this is fine all of them are fine so I'm just going to unravel gently maybe kind of starting from the root end here and you might need to keep cutting at the root end to release them so i'm just gonna do another little slice here hey joe how did it go yeah good yeah 
Uh, okay, so just yeah, unpeel from here and then hook it from this side and separate. Don't stress too much. If you've got little rips here and there, it will be absolutely fine. Just don't worry about anything, especially when you cook. It's all fixable, it's all fine. Unless you completely in, you know, incinerate something, you're fine. So this is still workable. We'll make it work, don't worry. Okay, so I'm just gonna do another kind of like slice here to release. And then Those just, are good for feeding a toddler. they're very good for feeding a toddler and they are also, but also, I mean, come on, this is just like your um, core, which is tasty. And these are little bits of cabbage. I might even just like put them underneath all of the holopti and then you can eat delicious tomato pieces of cabbage. You know, <laughs> if they survive, <laughs> if they survive. Okay, so I'll keep on releasing this cabbage. You could also, so in Ukraine, sometimes people would literally just blanch the whole head of cabbage in like a big pot of salted water. Um, but I don't know, I just like steaming things, so, you know, but it means that uh, separating them is a little bit of a pain. But it's fine, just keep going. And then once you get to this stage, you might need to be a little bit more gentle and not rush like I'm doing now. And just kind of like, look, just take the edges, first like unfurl the edges a little bit and then grab this. And then it should come off without breaking too much, yeah? So this is fine. Once you get to this kind of stage, I would try, if, you've, if you have a steamer that's big enough, I would try and just like stick it as a thing and then it will become softer and it'll be much easier to peel the rest of the layers off if you wanted to use them. Otherwise, if you've lost the will to live and this is enough for you, for your batch of holopti, again, you can just, you know, you can use it for a salad, you can slice kind of like through it and put it on the bottom of your holopti so you just get like some really nice bits of cabbages underneath. Or, you know, as I say, I'm just gonna stick it into the steamer. Or you can blanch it. Okay, so just make sure that you've got enough, if you're steaming, that you've got enough water at the bottom. I may have had a couple of slightly burned pans, you forget about it and then, yeah, you need steam. So make sure that there's enough. If you don't have a steamer, it, it is absolutely fine to plunge these for about a minute or two into hot water, take it out, see how pliable it is and then use that instead. But I'm using a steamer today, so uh, I think it preserves more nutrients. So we're gonna start, we're gonna put the outer, the tougher outer leaves of the cabbage onto the bottom uh, one, uh, the bottom layer, just because they will take a little bit longer and need like a stronger steam to, uh, to steam. And make sure that you've got a little bit of a gap here so the steam goes through to the other layers. And then I've got like, let's say three, four leaves on this layer and a little bit left over here, just a little bit of space. I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna do the next layers, just like that. One, two, three, and four, should be fine. And I'm gonna put the last layer on and I've always, I've got like this bit that's not blocked by the cabbage leaves so the steam goes all the way to the top. Always listen to your onions and if it feels like there's, you, you, you can hear the change in sound, if they're not making as many kind of like wet noises it means they're going dry and might actually burn. So again, just a tiny bit of water, scrape at the bottom and just keep cooking them. Okay, so the last leaf and then this I'm going to steam as a whole thing. Okay, it's been five minutes and it's plenty of time. They look really nice and soft. If your fingertips are sensitive, mine aren't, uh, use some tongs, but I'm just gonna use my hands. But please don't if you're, you know, if you don't have asbestos fingers like mine. So, 
Okay, my fingers are no longer as best as I thought. This is pretty hot. Let, let's just use tongs. Okay, and then I'm just going to lift them off and I'm going to put them on the tray just so they don't keep cooking because I don't want them to be too soft. This is just nice, see? So they're kind of like really nice and pliable and we'll be able to roll them really easily. And if any of them are torn, you can use two of torn ones to, to roll one a uh, whole bit. Okay. Cool. And finally, this I'm gonna put in here, cover it with a lid and wait for this guy to steam until it's pliable and I can take more leaves off. So I'm gonna put another kind of like five minutes on and see what happens. The carrot situation is ready. So let's see. So I'm gonna use kind of this much for, for Joe and all of this I'm gonna put into my kilo of meat. But this needs to cool down a little bit before you actually add it to the meat. So I'm just gonna put it into a uh, bowl. And then the veggie filling, we are gonna keep cooking. We're gonna keep the, the onions in and the carrots in and we're gonna add the mushrooms in now. Uh, I need just a little bit more oil. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more oil here. And I'm literally just gonna drop my mushrooms in. Give it a really good stir so they get coated in oil properly. Raise the heat a tiny bit. And I always season as I go along. So I know that there's a little bit of seasoning in the onions and carrots. And I've just put my mushrooms in and I'm gonna add a little bit of salt in now as well. And we're just gonna let this cook a bit. And then I'm gonna add my wild garlic in. And we're nearly there. Okay, and for the sauce, we're literally just going to slice the uh, onion. Just like in a regular way. Just into kind of half moons. So I'm just going to put the wild garlic in first and then I'm going to put the dill afterwards. If a little bit fell in, that's fine. Again, just a tiny bit more salt, season as you go along. As always, if the pan is looking a little bit dry and you can see the caramelized kind of like bits stuck there, just add a tiny bit of water, that's fine. We're just going to cook this like five minutes or so with the wild garlic and then I'm going to add the dill. Just a bit of black pepper. Just gonna put a part of the parboiled rice into here, let it cool, and it will be ready to roll. And as soon as it's cool, I'm gonna add the drained rice and we will be ready to go. It's been five minutes and this big piece of cabbage, it looks really nice and soft to me. So I'm just gonna take the tongs and I'm just gonna let it cool down here a bit. But you can already see that it's going to be look it's so easy to take off these layers now. Just need to make sure that they're not attached to the bit here. So I'm just going to cut it off and then I'm just going to separate them. See, and then we can use some extra cabbage leaves. So this is the mushrooms and wild garlic. But as I say, you can use large leaves of spinach or some chard or even some kale. And uh, we're just going to add the rice. But also you can use a little bit of parboiled buckwheat or any other grain that you love. Pearl barley, whatever, whatever you like. It, loads of things will work in it. Okay, and I'm not even going to bother to clean the pan. I'm going to make the sauce in it. I think it's absolutely fine. In fact, it's got all of the really lovely wild garlicky flavors still lingering around. So, what are we gonna do here? We're gonna do a little bit more oil here. I've run out of sunflower oil so I'm just using a bit of uh, olive oil which is fine. 
but you know, in Ukraine, sunflower oil will be used. Now the sliced shallots are going in. Sliced shallots, as always, just a tiny bit of salt. Well, or, you know, for me a tiny bit, this is actually quite a generous amount of salt. If there are any more crispy bits, just kind of like scrape at them. Where are we? Let's drain the rice. Okay, so we've been faffing around for about half an hour here and this is enough for the rice to, the water has cooled and I'm just literally going to drain the water out and use the rice in both of my fillings. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit kind of impatient here, so I'm just going to cover the onions with the lid. Just make sure that you keep an eye on them because sometimes you can forget if you cover something with the lid, but just so they kind of like steam and cook a little bit faster. We're gonna finish the meat filling. I've got my onions and my carrots, which are also cool. And that's roughly two medium carrots and, uh, you know, one kind of like medium shallot. I'm gonna put it in. So I'm just gonna do it with, uh, with the spoon first. But actually, I'm gonna go in with my hand afterwards. I'm just gonna give it a good kind of mince. Not too much, you're not you are not making kofta so you don't need it to be all like claggy but you do want the salt to be evenly distributed especially with something like a you know like a, a larger sea salt. Okay so I've got a kilo of meat here I've got our cooked onions and carrots about one shallot and one and a half medium carrots and now I'm going to put the rice in. So originally we had 200 grams here that I par, didn't par boil, but put the hot water over it. I'm going to need a little bit for Joe's. So I'm going to put about 150 grams into my meat filling. Okay, and this I'm going to reserve for Joe's veggie one. So for this amount of meat, rice, carrot and onion I know that's gonna sound like a lot I'm using molden salt here but any kind of like sea salt works in a similar way I'm gonna need at least 15 grams of salt in here just a bit of pepper so 15 grams of sea salt but if you're using table salt you kind of have to figure it out a little bit because it's gonna be less table salt is a lot kind of like stronger and saltier so please be careful you can always season it and then uh, fry a little patty and see you know how salty it is and then season some more if you need but it needs to be well salted and literally this is the, the sauce so we've got softened onions I've got three tins of tomatoes and I'm gonna use this base sauce for both the meat ones and then I'm going to take a little bit away and do Joe's in a separate pan but you know I'm just going to add all of them in and if they're chopped you don't have to do much if they're like this I would mash them a bit with a potato masher so I'm just going to literally go in and do that that's the way that I like to do it so you just crush these tomatoes into it and then make sure to season it well again I'm just gonna put like a generous uh, pinch of uh, salt in a sea salt you can always you know make sure that you taste as you're cooking because everybody's palates are different Mine, because I've been working in professional kitchens for so long, mine are actually quite jaded. So I'm a salt fiend. I, I like quite a lot of salt. But if you feel like you're not, you know, you're, you're more sensitive to salt, then just put a little bit in taste. But make sure to season properly, because sometimes people are like, oh, I made this, but it was just a bit underwhelming. Chances are, maybe it didn't have enough salt. And I know that people get really stressed out about it, but things should be like properly seasoned or seasoned to your taste when all of the flavors are coming out okay so that's it I am going to cook it for a little bit 
and then I'm gonna just stir through a couple of um, spoonfuls of our lovely fatty creme fraiche but if you want to make this vegan just leave out the creme fraiche it's fine so I steam them and to me these stock ends are quite pliable so I'm not going to cut them off, but sometimes if you feel like yours are a bit tough and it's going to be really hard to roll it up, you can do this. You can just kind of like cut these off and then, I don't know, chop them up and stick them into a filling or put them at the bottom of the thing. Like you don't have to throw them out or just eat them. Okay. And now we're going to roll kind of like a good spoonful and you know all over Ukraine people make holubtsi as you know th sometimes they make them really small my grandma used to make a version without the tomato sauce just with creme fraiche and garlic sauce and she used to make them this little and in Carpathian mountains in the western Ukraine they also make really little ones my mum made this size which is my favorite size so I'm just gonna put the meat in just kind of like not too tightly but just ne neatly like put it in maybe just a tiny bit more just like that and then we're gonna do kind of like burrito style we're gonna put this up I'm gonna put this to the side and then I'm going to roll quite tightly and then with the seam down and I'm just gonna keep it here for now and then we're gonna put them into the sauce when we're ready let's do it again so here's another one of the tougher leaves and look at it look at the leaf and see where it's more pleasing to you like which side you want to be the presenting side this looks a little bit duller to me so this is going to be my inside and this is going to be on the outside and it's going to look really pretty so look again don't worry about this slightly torn kind of like parts i'm just going to take another bit of meat and this is not bothering me it's going to roll quite nicely so i'm just going to put it up like a little burrito these bits to the side and then again I'm just going to roll them up and look we're getting these really nice neat cabbage rolls here let's do it let me show you a really torn one just so you know what to do so for example this uh, this is you know this is a bit torn here and you might get a little worried about that but don't literally just put it over once you roll it up there will be enough layering for for the meat to stay in okay so again i'm just putting the meat in shaping it into a little bit of a cylinder this bit don't stress we're just gonna put it up put these to the sides just like that and again i'm just going to roll it up like that beautiful and then if you do get one that's really just completely kind of shredded just layer it up with another one so look i've got one i've got like more of a intact one and this is going to be on the bottom and then i've got one that's a little bit messed up and i'm just going to layer it here to to you know cover some of the gaps and one more time i'm just going to go in a little bit of a cylinder and then both of these leaves as if it's one I'm going to put up and then these bits to the side roll it up and it's fine it's a little bit fatter but that's not a bad thing okay so if you're not vegan an addition of a bit of full fat from fresh into the tomato sauce is really what makes it I think and makes it taste extremely Ukrainian so make sure that it's full fat then it won't split so one and two and it has that I don't know if you've ever made a tomato sauce with the addition of a bit of butter or cream but the sourness for the, from the creme fraiche from the smetana it just makes it so luscious I just love it so much and that the smell immediately just transports me back to Ukraine and to my mom's cooking. That's it. So this is ready. I'm just going to put a little bit of the sauce into another pan so I can cook Joe's um, vegetarian holubtsi in it. And then the meat ones which are ready, we're gonna stick into this bigger pan. 
Okay, the whole, the rest of the cabbage that we steamed whole, we're just gonna make sure that um, the leaves can be separated here and it's really quite easy to unfurl them and use them as well. So look, just find the edges of the top leaf and then very easily, boop, it just comes off. So, you know, remember those little bits of cabbage? I'm just gonna layer them at the bottom of his pan. Um, just because by the time he finishes the whole tea, it will be reheated enough times for the cores and everything to really soften and he'll, then he'll just eat them as pieces of cabbage. Okay, veggie filling, mushrooms, wild garlic or any greens, dill, onions and carrots and I'm gonna add, well, because it's been parboiled, it's now a hundred grams of kind of like, you know, steamed, slightly steamed cooked rice. Give it a stir. I'm just gonna give another thing of seasoning. Just like that, but I've been seasoning all along so it doesn't need much. I've tasted it before and it was almost there. Just because I added rice, I just added a tiny, tiny little bit more salt. And that's it, and we're ready to rock and roll with the vegetarian ones. Okay, because the vegetarian filling is a little bit looser, it's not as sticky as the meat one. If I do have torn leaves like this, I am more inclined to kind of, you know, layer them up a bit. So I'm just gonna do a double leaf for this veggie. And then I'm just gonna put some of it in. Again, just, just a tiny bit more here. And then I'm gonna roll up, just like I did before with the meat one. So up it goes. Then if it's falling apart a little bit, just, you know, use your hands to kind of like tighten it in a little bit. And then side, side, and then I'm gonna tightly roll it up and just like that with the seam down we're gonna stick it into the sauce when they're all done okay and joe's got the nice little bits of cabbage underneath and i'm just gonna put these in and he's got a nice little kind of veggie option here that i'm also going to cook for about half an hour kind of 40 minutes Ooh, and then we're just gonna cover it Okay, so our holopsi are ready. Dun, dun, dun. Beautiful. Then I'm gonna just grab a bit more sauce. Okay, I know we've put creme fraiche into the sauce already, but you can always do it more. And actually this contrast between the hot holopsi and the sauce and a little bit of this cooling sour cream, I can't recommend it enough. I mean, just like this and then a little bit of this. I mean, this is just absolute heaven. 